Right over at X Games, we got uh, Mr. Andy Buckworth, longtime friend of the show, first time caller, uh, and then even even longer, fiftieth time caller to the show, Sam motherfucking Mole. Yeah, hello. The Glove Lord himself. Plenty of fisting. What's going on, boys? Oh, mate, I've just been sitting under a tent for a few days. You've Anywhere. been. You're uh, you're doing big. You're doing big things, bro. Big things here. Oh, uh, listen. I don't know whether to say we're doing big things, but we're putting... JB's putting a lot of tattoos on a lot of people, which is nice. And we've got Sarah today. She's also helping put tattoos on people. So, X Games Sydney, Andy Buckworth, how's it been for you? What have you been competing in? What have you been doing? Well, mate, growing up in Australia and just always idolising watching the X Games and then finally getting to compete in a few X Games in LA and then it moving to Austin and then from Austin to Minneapolis. It's been a pretty awesome journey riding the X Games wave and uh, taking it over into Europe uh, a few years back was pretty unreal also. But uh, there's no greater feeling than coming back to Australian soil and getting to compete on the biggest stage for action sports uh, in front of an Australian crowd. There's no better feeling than that. Um, so with that being said, I've been looking forward to this all year long. I had a pretty substantial injury that I had to overcome, but uh, overcame that and now I'm here, Sydney, Australia, Sydney X Games, and it's been pretty good so far. The, um, the only downside to this whole thing has just been the weather, right? They've had a bit of, uh, bit of weirdness go on that they kind of... Inclement weather, they call yeah. it. Wait, Briggs, Briggs, can we, can we just tuck it out of the speakers? Because it's like feeding back real hard in here. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, I can like hear it weird. Um, yeah, so the weather's kind of been like the only downside, but I guess no one can really control that. Yeah, that's that's right, mate. Well, we showed up. I came, I flew straight in, straight in from America um, doing the US Nitro Circus Tour. I flew straight in, and when I landed, it was dumping rain. That wasn't the greatest thing for the BMX dirt jumps because once the jumps get wet, it takes quite a bit to dry them, and... We had Cam White and his team out there just day in, day out, night and day, just putting so much effort into keeping those things dry. But um, sadly, we just didn't get them running the greatest. And qualifying went ahead yesterday at 4.15 on jumps that were very far from rideable. Um, never have I thought that I'd see an X Games competition where half of the field didn't make it through the jumps, but that was the case yesterday, and yeah, that was uh, that was just one of those things where yeah. everyone had to ride the same jumps, and it was just the survival of the fittest. And it becomes one of those things where it's like, you've got to play that balancing act of like, alright, do I try and send it off this thing and risk not getting through the, the, the course, or do I back it down and do a trick that if I land it, it just might not even get me into the show. That's exactly right. And what you found yesterday was a lot of people's first runs were just very mediocre tricks, no handers, turn downs, tail whips, and maybe the odd backflip. And that's, to me, not really the X game spirit. So I rolled the dice. I was on the other side of things where I tried to roll the dice and I tried to double flip on the first jump. And like I said, the jumps were just very far from rideable and didn't really pay off for me. But um, we're here, live to tell another tale. Yeah, that's it. And I suppose, like, at the end of the day, it's just one of those things, like, you sort of can only really ride to the conditions that get presented, you know? And that's exactly right. And uh, yesterday was a pretty big day for me. I had BMX Big Air in the morning. And How'd you do in that? Um, well, I kind of made an executive decision to not roll the dice and kind of scale it back a little bit for Big Air, just because I had dirt it backed up right afterwards. So yeah. Big Air finished at one and BMX Dirt started at one. Yeah, right. So uh, I kind of made the executive decision to scale it back and not roll the dice and not kill myself in Big Air because I wanted to save myself for dirt. But um, in hindsight, looking back now, I kind of wish I rolled the dice in both of them. But yeah. it's just one of those things, mate, where you just don't know what's going to happen. And you got a pretty full year like in terms of your schedule you're always a dude that's like super busy right yeah that's right so x games is over for me now um i did the very best i could with the conditions and now i've got a couple of weeks of riding and just hanging out and then i am on board a flight to europe for the nitro circus europe tour how long have you been like you're like one of the original uh nitro dudes right yeah, that's right. I started riding Nitro Circus shows in the very first show in Brisbane, 2010. 
Um, Dude, has it been that long? Yeah, eight Crazy, years. Yeah. That's gnarly. Eight years around the world a couple of times and we're still still pumping. And let me just say that this last tour that we've done in North America, Canada and the northern states of uh, the USA was absolutely phenomenal. We've got a new ramp on the BMX side and it just really turned heads. It got that vibe back and everyone's uh, on top of that rolling. That vibe was just unreal. Yep. And the crowd could really feel that and they fed off that. The crowd was loud and the Facebook feedback was unreal. We started doing a new thing where they're tuning in live on Facebook during yeah, the yep. BMX Big Air section. So um, fans can tune in from home or from the car or wherever they're on Facebook and uh, they can watch the BMX Big Air segment. And instead of it being set tricks, it's a competition and there's a thousand bucks up for grabs. And yeah, right. the new jump is just unreal. It's a heavenly jump. You so can, what is that new jump? So traditionally on the Nitro Circus Tour, we've got a 40 foot long jump with a, I think it's like a 14 foot high landing yep. with a maybe 10 foot high takeoff. So it's a pretty long, mellow jump. The new jump is 13 foot tall, 22 foot landing and 40 foot long. So what you're doing is you're coming in from the top of the, the roll in and you're putting three solid cranks in. You're going as fast as you possibly can and you're pumping the transition at the bottom and because it's steep the new takeoff is really steep it just sends you to the moon like you're you're just getting heights of you know upwards of 40 feet above really? yeah just i've never been so high on my bike and it's just such an awesome feeling like forever and does it feel safe too yeah it feels safe and because the landing's big and steep and it's inflatable it's just uh it's just such a great feeling like forever growing up riding bmx it started off with a piece of wood against a brick yeah and then you know you move to building a little dirt jump in the woods and then you build a bigger dirt jump in the woods and then forever you're just looking for that bigger jump and that progression and uh bmx kind of went down a fork in the road where it went down the mega ramp idea which is a mellow takeoff into a huge roll uh, a huge roll in mellow takeoff and a huge quarter pipe now that's all pretty fun but um the nitro circus going in a complete other direction with a really steep takeoff really steep landing and a 40 foot gap it's just like it's another direction and it just allows you to progress the sport and do bigger tricks and it's always going to get bigger and bigger like for example the end of the nitro circus show finishes with six people in a row doing triple backflips really it's just abs it's just chaos it's crazy chaos and I don't really know where the sport could go from here, but you know the sky really is the limit, especially when we're testing out these new jumps and new yeah. pushing the limits to that next level. Did it go like flat for a little bit in Nitro? Like not not to talk shit, but when you're doing anything for ten years, it's got to kind of get a little bit sort of slow in a way. So like, did it get flat and now this is like this new thing that's kind of like re-energized everybody? Yeah. So that's what's happened. Whether whether you're talking about the fans or whether you're talking about the riders, everything has a use-by date. Everything's been seen, and especially in this modern-day age of the internet, YouTube, you know, yeah. everyone's everyone's seen and everything. see it right now. Yeah, like, everyone wants to see it right now. You just pull out your smartphone, you dive in a few things on the YouTube, and you can pull up absolutely anything. Yeah. And uh, when you're talking about action sports, it's such a small demographic, and it's such a small group of people that are actually really die-hard fan interested in it. Yeah. So, and when not you, just like seeing it on the explore page kind of deal. Exactly. So, like when you're putting on a live show like Nitro Circus, you've got such a small demographic already. And now, when you're saying ten years of touring, eight years of touring, that small demographic they've seen it all before. Yeah. And the question on everyone's lips is, what's different to this show? And when you're talking about bringing a whole family to a show now there's so much involved you've got to park you've got to get yeah. the kids out of the house you've got to get everyone situated you've got to get to the stadium you've got to take your seat a hot dog is you know six dollars fifty on top of the you know it's yeah. expensive night for an australian family so they've got to understand why they're paying the money every single year to see a show that they've already seen before but with that being said this new show if you've seen an Nitro Circus show before, you've seen nothing like this. Yeah, yeah. This will literally knock your socks off. Being a rider and seeing that show night in, night out, I just did a whole tour. I did 10 shows in a row, and 
by the 10th show I still wasn't over it so yeah. with that being said you guys fans watching Nitro Circus you could come and watch it 10 times and still not be bored it's every show is different especially with that big air competition aspect everyone wants to push it some nights some people push it other nights they're having people having off night but uh yeah, we're seeing real life world first tricks that have never been done even into an airbag getting tried and getting landed and that to be a part of that you can come to a show and actually be part of an action sports historical first, moment. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy that dudes cuz like traditionally it was always like X Games is where shit was getting thrown down for the first time. That's like crazy that night it's now sort of getting done on like Nitro tours on like random nights. They're not even really planning for the shit exactly like that's that's what it is it's it's the saying goes catching lightning in a bottle and we seem to just catch that lightning every single night it's pretty phenomenal and like i talked about earlier with the vibe between the riders because we've got something new and then the crowd is really backing us yeah that vibe on top of the rolling is phenomenal the riders are really feeding off that and then because you can't fake that shit eh? no definitely not and like when you're sitting on top of that rolling for example and you're about to drop in and do a triple backflip you Man, need it. You need that vibe. Yeah. You, you can't be feeling under the weather. You can't be sitting up there with the flu or, you know, you you got to really have your wits about you and you got to be just really on one yeah. to want to drop in and do three backflips on a BMX bike. Yeah. Like, that's where the progression's gone. So when that crowd gets loud and the crowd gets behind us, we really feel that. And then that translates to us just really pushing the limits of the sport and you know you might have a trick in your mind you might have been thinking about it for a while but when that crowd's going nuts it just something flicks a switch in your brain and you're like oh i don't care of the consequences right now yeah i'm gonna just absolutely send it and with that say that being said as well that was what i felt yesterday the jumps were terrible um we were making the most of a bad situation but this is an Australian crowd, you know, there was so many people in the crowd that know my name from Nitro Circus shows or just because I'm Australian and, you know, wanting to produce a good show for the Australian crowd and when they got loud for my name, you know, that's that was the difference between taking that safe run or just rolling the dice and trying that double on a jump that was getting, you know, cased on or not getting cleared properly. So, yeah, I mean... We just must be a group of nut jobs. <laughs> That's kind yeah. of like a little insight into how our minds work. Yeah, it's it's sick, but like, and and I think um, that's what's been cool about doing the podcast. Like, you kind of really get to to hear those stories of like mm. where people's heads are at, and you know, it's um yeah, it's fucking rad to to know that you do get that influence from you know from the crowds and stuff, and especially like the Nitro tours, they play it up massive too, and yeah. it feels like the nitro stuff feels like you're like you're not really removed as a fan like you actually feel like you're a very necessary part of the show if that makes sense like here it feels like you're kind of watching the show and it's not to take away from this obviously but it, there's a more intimate vibe i think with with some of the nitro stuff you could not be any more correct with that when you come to an x games you pay for your ticket you take your seats you watch an amazing show you get to see the mega ramp the mega ramp the big air ramp whatever you want to call it the 70 foot long 27 foot quarter pipe like that thing there's only one in the world yeah you know that thing is one of a kind it's kind of like the white rhino it just kind of hangs around and they ship it all over the world to put in these events the and mint rhino. yeah well i don't know about that you can tell that you can tell some stories about that one but um yeah so it's here it's in sydney and you buy your ticket and you watch the show but the cool thing about nitro circus is the announcers do a phenomenal job yeah. they interact with the crowd they pull people out of the crowd to be part of the show they throw out merch into the crowd like it you couldn't do a nitro circus show in an empty stadium yeah. it just it wouldn't be the same thing you'd be just talking to a bunch to no one it'd be like talking to a mirror yeah. it just and then the riders wouldn't feed off it you'd get single flips double flips and, and maybe a few tail whoops and stuff but when that crowd's there and that vibe starts pumping you just you can't help yourself yeah. you might even say to the other riders like oh, oh i'm not feeling it not feeling it yeah. not feeling it tonight and as soon as you hear that music and music is a huge thing for an athlete you know you start yeah. connecting the dots between a certain tune or a certain song to a certain moment in your life where you won a medal or you did the world first trick or you had an awesome night on the ramp and you start connecting the dots between the music and the ramps there the crowds there all of a sudden your spirits are changed like i've seen people go from laying in the change room with the flu not 
moving yeah. to, oh, I'm not going to ride the show. I don't think I'll be able to make it. I'm dying. As soon as that music comes on, as soon as that crowd starts screaming, they like those are the nights where you dig deep and you just start producing absolute greatness. Yeah, yeah. That's fucking so sick, man. It's so true too. Like yeah. you, you definitely see it. And even like, man, even when I've like filmed certain events, you're like, I'm like, oh, it's just a fucking paycheck. You just sort of go there to do do the job and then you go. And it's like, when it is that crazy vibe, like you even want to get into it on like the film side. And that's what's crazy too. Like when you're in a situation, whether it's X Games or the Do Tour or anything, is the Dew Tour still around? The Dew Tour is not around. They do. That was pretty sick. They eh? do an odd skate event here and there, but yeah, I don't know if the listeners are familiar with the Dew Tour, but the Dew Tour That's just some OG shit. That was uh, five stops a year in the US that gave skateboard, BMX, and freestyle motocross an opportunity to show up five times a year, a month apart, in a different state every time, and battle it out for twenty thousand dollars cash prize money like first place was twenty thousand dollars and then the winner of the series so it was a points grab over the five stops the winner of the series got seventy five thousand dollars in a toyota tundra yeah like where are those days i know bring back the tundra yeah yeah it's crazy that like it yeah it was healthy for a while and then i guess it just went away yeah, when, when you're talking about big corporate companies like Mountain yeah. Dew and, you know, TV stations. You know, there was some, like, really crazy shit that... Uh, I don't know how much it affected due to her, but did you ever hear that, um, the thing with Tyler, the creator, and he made, like, that Mountain Dew commercial? And it was all around that due to her days when they were, like, right in the scene, and then Tyler, the creator, made this commercial, and it was, like, it wasn't fucking racist at all. And it, like, he's a black dude, obviously, and it uh, got deemed to be, like, racist, went all through the media, and it was, like, right around that time when they stopped the Jew tour. Oh, so, wow. like, I think there was, like, a lot of weird shit that was at play that, that kind of did stop that. I think there may be a lot of weirdness and a lot of, uh, you know, when you're talking about TV stations, yeah, they're not... Ratings. There's and- no one... When you're talking action sports and then you're talking mainstream media, you got a confliction right there because mainstream media, they're not passionate. No. Action sports is a passion-driven thing. Like, you've got to be either a nut job or passionate about something to break your legs or break your back or every action sports person's had some tremendous injury where yeah. it's, you know, kept them off the bike for Even a long period of like time. Even just average guy, man. You know, you know what's crazy? Like, you walk around any, like, X Games, you walk around any... Um, like supercross event like you just see average fucking dudes in wheelchairs yeah and, that's right and whenever i'm around those kind of events with people that aren't like in the action sports industry people always trip out on like fuck do you think you got hurt riding i was like well 100 percent. yeah and it's like i know but like, how many people in wheelchairs do you know and it's like the average person just really doesn't have to deal with yeah. paralysis as like a fucking occupational hazard of your hobby yeah that's right like that's what I'm saying like you gotta be a nut job or just insanely passionate about whatever you're doing if you're laying on the ground with a broken leg or a broken hip or a broken back or broken something you're laying on the ground getting put on a stretcher in an ambulance and the the thoughts going through your mind is like I wonder how long it is till I can ride again yeah you must be you must be a psycho and like that's the same thought process as a lot of people well all of my friends everyone in action sports that I ever have ever spoken to it's just like you're in the most pain you could possibly be in and you're thinking like oh how can I get how back can I quicker? get back yeah how can I get back quicker and be back on the bike so I can do this all again well, I've yeah. got to get redemption I've got to do this again and make this dream happen and yeah. they <laughs> blows me away and uh, with that exact thing being said like all my friends that work jobs and you know they're tradies or work in the mines or in America they're in some sort of media job or you know they're like oh you must have it easy. Yeah. I was like, well, did you break your legs at work yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, so everything's got a silver lining and the grass is always greener on the other side. But me personally and everyone I've ever spoken to, I wouldn't trade this for anything. Yeah. There's, not a, there's nothing in the world I'd trade it for. It's crazy too. Like, how old are you now? Like 26, 27? I'm 28. 28. I'm, getting, I'm over the hill. I've taken a lot longer to heal. And But dude, <laughs> that's like, you've had a long fucking career in this shit, man. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Like, seriously, you have? Yeah, and I'm not looking at stopping anytime soon. No, I mean, you're still, um, yeah, obviously you're still fucking right, right there at the top of the sport, but it is crazy that, um, yeah, you've been a guy that just hasn't come and gone. There's been a lot of people that have 
sort of gone through the uh, the rot- rotating door um, just since you've been around even. Yeah, I've, you see people come and go and it was funny we talked about the Dew Tour because that is so accurate. With the Dew Tour, every year there'd be some YouTube, some web edit sensation that he's going to win this year, he's going to take down the title, blah, blah, blah. And then every year that YouTube sensation is show up to open qualifying and we well, see... <laughs> You can't believe everything you see on the internet because they'd show up and it wouldn't happen. So that re- re- revolving door, like you spoke of, it's so true. They people come and they go and they realise that, mate, to do this it takes a lot of passion. There's there's not much money in this stuff anymore. Yeah. And you really do have to be at the top of the sport. And it's like not guaranteed money, but 100 percent you're going to get hurt at some yeah, point. That, that like that's the only guarantee. Exactly. You're guaranteed to get hurt, and the money it's so seasonal and it fluctuates, and you know like my tax bloke can't work it out he's trying to do income averaging and it's just it's all over the chart yeah Yeah, it's like what average it's like all over the chart so that's what that's where the revolving door billions to billions it's just so like so hard to keep up you know Trump said it billions and billions and billions (laughs) nah nah but um yeah it's it's pretty crazy that revolving door just people coming and going and they get to a point where they're just at the absolute top and They'll live in some ridiculous town, middle America, where the same six people see their T-shirt every day. And to a company, it doesn't matter if you're the best damn dude on a Harley, a motorbike, a freestyle bike, doesn't matter. Because if the same six dudes are looking at you every single day, like, how are you going to sell a T-shirt? Yeah. Who are you selling a T-shirt to? Yeah. So, like, it's, it's a tough industry and people come and go pretty quickly because then, you know, their first phone bill comes around the corner and they're like oh well shit yeah. I haven't made any money this month Yeah. so uh, yeah it's, it's a pretty brutal cutthroat industry so, that's, so you gotta like long jeopardy is good it's kind of like playing CeeLo that's the dice game or gambling yeah, yeah. You know, sooner or later it'll come back around yeah that's it um, what was I oh, how's like the whole um, oh yes <laughs> you're that's kidding this dude got a made for you what that's is so that sick. Andy Buckworth? Oh, oh shut the front gate. You're kidding. That is so That's sick. And he's got one if you can sign it for him. Yeah, fucking oh. That, that is gangster. That's so sick. What a legend. No way. That Wait, is come around, unreal. Come around here so we can get you on the camera. Sit down. That yeah, is, sit down, actually. Yeah. That is unreal. Put the headphones Put on, mate. Headphones on. Yeah, headphones are there. I'm going to turn your mic on. Yeah, so talking to the mic, bring it close to your face. That's the <laughs> sickest shit ever. So, mate, tell me about this. Um, I made, I got sick and tired of getting posters signed. Um, so I started making shirts and uh, cards for myself and it seems to be motocross, BMX, alcohol related. That's awesome. Sadly, Here, wait up. i got to get this on the vlog. we got to vlog this shit. This is the world's most informal podcast. Yes, Andy Buckworth with this Chuck legend off. here has just come through with the goods. And he's got a Jay Tui shirt with a Tui's new logo. Unreal. We have to go find Jay Tui and show him that. That is the best thing ever. So, yeah, how long have you been doing that for? About 18 months. Really? So, what? You just, like, do that and then come to sporting events and, like, show it off, basically? That's it. <laughs> really? Yeah. So, what other stuff are you into? Uh, I follow. So, you, like, follow this sort of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. What a lord. That's the coolest thing ever. It's much better than getting posters signed and not putting them on the wall. And like, dude, he's frothing. Like, that's... I have to agree. This is pretty unreal. I can't wait to show some of the Aussie boys. That's <laughs> so good. Man, what a fucking rad idea. What's your name? Tony. Tony. Do you have like an Instagram account that you put shit on? I do. What, do, what is it? That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, mate, you got to know your handle, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, shit. That's rad. I love that shit. So what, are, what other events, what other guys have you got going on? Um, I've got um, Clinton Moore, yeah, Bundy shirt. Oh, nice. Yeah, um, Andy, Jay's, um, are the ones I bought a Jackson Strong one. Yeah. X Games as well. So what's the Jackson Strong inspired one? Have you got them with you? Yeah. This is the best. Oh, I love it. So for people listening, we've just had an absolute mad dog come up with a Andy Buckworth shirt that is AB instead of VB. It's like logoed out. And he's also wearing a J Tui shirt, but it's a Tui's new. Uh, and he's got the Nitro Circus uh, 
on there as well. Oh, Jack lives here. Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! Oh, Razor Jack to Jacko. Wait, show that to the camera as well. That is so good. Oh my god. This is unreal. Could you hold that one up, Sarah? Fuck yeah, X Games. That's so good. Pull it down a little bit. You gotta find your Instagram for us, man. Wow. We gotta give you a shout out. That it's fucking is awesome. Unreal. That's wait, that's so like really, really cool, dude. He's got some uh, little autograph cards and all sorts of stuff going on. No way, man. This is this is awesome. Yeah, isn't it ever? Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Right. What a legend. Yeah, what a what a legend. And then yeah, the Jack lives here. That's yep. awesome. Full credit to you, mate. Fair play. Oh well. Um, card one for. I'll have to, if I see Tui, you know, and I see Jacko, I'll have to let him know to come yeah. find you. So that's, what's this one? Oh, nice. So this is just your X Games. That's my X Games, Jackson Strong. Subway. Because it's, so it's a Jack. Yeah. Oh, it's a Jack. It's a yeah, Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack. Dude, you're a, you're a creative dude, man. I'm, I'm pumped on that. That's really, really cool. It's things like this that make it worthwhile. Like, I get to meet people. Yeah. Talk to people. And that's what it's really all about. I've got to do things all over the place yeah man because um, you know what like how many people just sort of walk up and expect it you're like oh can I have a photo give me a glove give it but like you know you're actually it's obvious that you're taking the time to do something for other people I think that's what makes it a little bit more or well, it's a bit like easier for people to then be like super frothing on you you know what I mean yeah that's it like, and that's what it's that's what it's all about I get to meet people that's sick good dude. experience that's what it's all about for me. Hell yeah, dude. No, nah, that's so rad. That Thanks. was like the coolest shit ever. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks that's heaps right. for that, Tony. Thanks that's for stopping right. by. Not a problem. Thanks for coming on the podcast, Thank mate. Thank you for signing it. Yeah. Have Thanks a legend. Have Thanks. a good rest of your X Games experience. That was pretty cool. Yeah, man. We'll be we'll be here. So and then yeah, well, if you can't find Jacko, come back here and we'll make it happen. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to shoot him a text and get him back here. But go have a look for him and see if you can hand him that shirt because I'm I'm sure he will be that is, pumped to see that. Yeah, that thing's sick. We'll keep you posted. Right? What's yeah, your What's your Instagram handle? Find it. You gotta find that shit for us. That's so rad, dude. Are you gonna run that shit? Oh my God. All right, we're just waiting to get the Instagram so people can yeah. check it out. A very, very creative man. I like it. You just gotta, yeah, just that's uh, that's it there. What is it, Andy? Read it out. Tony G. What is it? Is that just it? At Tony G. Hey, Andy. Hang on. Uh, so it is uh, Lizard Kid TG. At Lizard Kid TG. Tony G. That is, yeah, fucking rad, dude. Awesome, bro. Well, um, thanks for having a yarn on our little cheeky podcast here. And uh, yeah, good luck finding Jacko. If you can't find him, just come back here and we'll, we'll figure it out for you. Excellent. Thanks for having me, guys. Cheers, brother. <laughs> is that the best random like fan thing ever that was pretty unreal that never, nothing like that's ever happened before no nah, that's sick eh? yeah jeez where do you even go from that <laughs> I think uh, I think we've got to go find uh, Jacko and Tui and Clint and just let them know that there's some greatness out there there is great greatness awaits um, what's your schedule for the rest of this uh, deal well mate are you done riding yeah, I'm done riding Freestyle is just about to kick off. I think I can hear them announcing it. They were just really? doing some track prep. Um, I know you're a freestyle fan. I'm a huge freestyle fan. So um, I think we should wrap this up here. Go and watch it. Go watch some freestyle. Maybe we'll get one of the freestyle boys on here and you can have a chat about the how their experience went. I reckon we'll maybe get the podium on here. Thanks for coming on, bro. We've been we've been mates for a while. It's good yeah, to see you. Yeah. I, I haven't seen you in a long time. We too. played played some golf. Uh, when was the last time we played golf? Oh, years ago, mate. Was years it? Ago. Did we play or just go to the range? We just went to the driving range. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I thought we did. We're just in Marietta, right? Yeah, just went to the Marietta driving range. I was, you know. I was ooge into golf there for a minute. Yeah. I didn't have much else to do in America. I didn't have much else back then either. I think I was going through a bit of a, a dry period of cre uh, creativeness, and I yeah. couldn't find new tricks to learn and things to ride, places to ride, people to ride with. It's just kind of a bit of limbo. So I went and hit some balls around, but after the injury I've never been more motivated to ride and that's where uh, that's where we are now that's where we are now sick bro well cheers for coming on we'll be back a bit later on we'll stop recording but uh, I think people just keep listening because there's more podcasting to come so 
Sick. Thanks, bros. See you, bro.